Hey, it's great to be with you and uh, with my friend Dan and Matt. Matt, hey. you are a church pastor in Hitchin. Tell us a little bit That's about right. the church. Uh, so I have the privilege of leading Zio Church in Hitchin. Zio is a word from the Bible, which means passion. So we're a passionate church. Church is 40 years old this month, actually. Founded by my dad, planted in the front room of our family home. He led it for 31 years. And then I've had the privilege of leading for the last nine years. Wow. Uh -huh understand that you are running the well-being series we are running the well-being series yeah we've been uh, running since the beginning of this year 2021 why should you do the well-being at this point in time i think two reasons i think firstly in terms of big vision like we love the fact that the mission of god is all about seeing people flourish and restored and receiving the healing and wholeness of God as they come back into relationship with him. The big picture of Genesis to Revelation. And so we just know that's what God's about. He's about completely transforming every part of people's lives. And so that's our passion as a church. And if ever there was a moment where that was needed, it's right now. This last devastating year we've had where not just physical well-being, emotional well-being issues, relationships are under pressure, people are losing jobs. Jobs, their finances are under pressure if ever there was a moment for the church to be good news and speak good news it's right now and so for us it was perfect timing for us to have our vision but actually see a way that we could practically outwork that wow and and who's been coming to it has it just been your church congregation or has there been more people than that so we have um, eight groups running and wow. uh, six adult groups uh, a young adults group and a youth group and as well our, our Sunday stuff as well for the kids and we promoted it all through social media. We have around 150 people involved and 25 of those are not from our church. They're from the community who've wow. engaged with it because again, like we wanted to do a big shout out and say, you know, why don't you try this out? Yes, there's a spiritual dynamic to it, but you, you may be surprised by what you find. Amazing. And, ha and how has been the different age group experiences for you, like kids and youth particularly? Well, um, what I, I mean, what I love about the well-being course is, again, it's, it's scratching a real genuine felt need. And, and we run a, a Friday night uh, well-being course for our young people. And it's just been fantastic to see, probably more than anything else that we've done in the last year for our young people. We've had the most attendance of young people uh, engaging with this. Wow. The most young people following up on WhatsApp conversations, which makes total sense because we know they're grappling with this stuff. And so, and that has included, again, young people not from our church, parents who contacted us and said, could, could my child, could my young person, teenager, uh, participate in this group? And so we've been thrilled to see that but thrilled to see the engagement because like many churches we have struggled to engage our young people in zoom and 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 whatsapp because they spend a lot of their time doing that in, in their school stuff but but this has got their attention and they've they've loved being involved and wow. you're on week six at the moment yeah we just um, we're doing sunday mornings uh, teaching each theme and then following it up with uh, all the groups um you know, then digging deep with the well-being journey with the video material, which we think is just brilliant, probably some of the best we've seen. And uh, yeah, we, it was relational well-being on, on Sunday. Many people as well have the Dave Smith book, I've got it myself, so uh -huh. we're encouraging people to engage with that. Sometimes put stuff on social media, what's really struck them. And we've also produced some little short videos. So like on, on, on Sunday, we had a bunch of our people, we had a little Vox Pop interview of people from our church saying how they've improved their relational well-being or their spiritual oh, well-being the week before. And so really trying to use this as an opportunity with the well-being journey to, to get people in our community saying online, this is, this is how we can do this stuff. And do you think, I mean, you're running it now, would it be a one-off or, or how do you think, what would you do as a church leader and what would you say to other church leaders that may be thinking about it, where you're at, as it fitted in your church calendar? Is it something you would do more? Yeah, I think there's, there's different ways of doing it. So we're in the the season right now for this this term of just like we're doing it right across the whole church it's our sundays it's our groups it's cutting all the way through because we just felt we want everyone in our church community and wider community to have the opportunity to engage but we've been so impressed and the, the content's so good going forward our, our desire is that we'll 
always run a wellbeing journey course group every single term. Like we run Alpha every single term. Yeah. There are other courses that we run every single term. And because this is a great missional connection box um, uh, point, because this is something that we know touches a felt need of people, like why would we want to stop giving people the opportunity to do that. Even my next door neighbor, I spoke to my next door neighbor, Stu, uh, just on this weekend, and I told him about the wellbeing journey. He's, he's not involved this term, and he's really keen to do it next term. So if I have to run it myself, <laughs> like, I, I don't want to miss out on the opportunity to practically help people in their well-being, but at the same time, maybe bring some spiritual awakening that they'll realize that to be truly well, you've got to have Jesus in your life. So you're saying this isn't just for a moment, you're thinking long term with this. Yeah, so, so yeah, absolutely. So you would say to a church leader, you haven't missed the boat? Or, you know, how would you say a church leader who's got a busy calendar? What, how have you made this a priority? Well, I, I just think that, you know, we, we are committed, as I know, you know, many churches are, to be good news to the, to the community and the people around them. Um, we know this is a, a massive challenge around well-being on so many areas. That challenge is not going away. Um, even as we come out of COVID, even before we were going into COVID, people are facing huge pressures in life. And so... You know, this is an amazing opportunity every single term, every single year to be saying to people, hey, why don't you join us for a space to think this stuff through, have some tools, be better equipped and actually see, is there a God there who if you invite him to be part of your life, um, you could really see some change and transformation. So for us, like this is, this is part of our missional strategy for years to come in the same way that we have other things that we repeat because we can see that God's doing something in them. Yeah. And was it an easy invite for people to, you spoke to your neighbour, obviously got 25 that have come on board. Did your Christian community or your Christian family, oh, that's an easy invite to bring someone into? Yeah, totally, because I think this is the language of our culture, isn't it? That people recognise the challenges around emotional well-being or financial well-being or relational well-being. And so, so we're, we're using language that ultimately we know is biblical language, but it's the cultural language. And so... Um, you know, people in my neighborhood, people that we connect with in our community, when we say, hey, do you need some help with your emotional well-being or financial well-being? Of course, the answer to that is yes. Yeah, we absolutely. all do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we all do. And especially, <laughs> especially right. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, and we're even more aware of it right now. So it's not a sell at all. And, I, and, and again, I think of all the things that we've done in the last year or so in this lockdown season, this has been the one that most people have just gone, well, yeah. Let, let's jump in, and that's why we've been so excited. But having done it, we just realised, no, this has got to be part of our ongoing way of serving the community to provide this opportunity for people, in the same way that we run a job club or you know those other things, because mm. people need it. Those needs aren't going to go away. And so this is not a one-hit wonder. This is an ongoing opportunity to be good Have news. you got any story of anyone that is on the course, maybe there for the first time, any story of what they've responded to, how they've done, how they found it? Not, not so much yet, Roy, to be honest. Like, it's, it's been kind of early days. I think we, I had a meeting with all our group leaders on, on uh, Sunday, and we were talking to all the group leaders now that we're coming into the, the last two or three weeks of the course about you know, how they encourage people in their groups to make the next step, which could be a step towards Jesus, but could be like, hey, why don't you, you join us as a community? Or you know, why don't you look at this next thing? And so, so in truth, um, no, no great revolution so far. The biggest encouragement to us is that those people are still with us. Yeah. Mm. That, that, that actually after week two, they didn't ditch it. That, um, and particularly bear in mind that there is, you know, some spiritual content in this stuff, quite strong in places. Great, but it's, you know, it's, it's going for it, which is fantastic. But people are still on the journey. And, you know, you guys know that at the end of the day, the journey of faith is a long journey, isn't it? And, uh, you know, we love those great Damascus Road moments, but more than anything else, we want to walk with people, journey with people. I, I've been journeying with my neighbours for three and a half years, and, you know, I'm excited about the fact that, you know, some of my neighbours are thinking, yeah, we might do this next. And so, just faithful, let's just get on with it. And I think the critical thing about the series is that you bring people on a journey where financial, emotional, but the spiritual is in there yeah. saying we do want people to connect with Jesus. Yeah. We do want that to be a reality in their lives. We haven't backed off from that, no. 
But what we're finding is people and other church leaders that are doing this within their community, that has not been a problem mm. because they do recognise spiritual as a part of their well-being now. Yeah, absolutely. And I think what's great about the the well-being journey is is that if you just want to extract some good practical tips and helps and tools, you're going to get that. And so you can't complain about the content and say, oh, no, it's just all Christian and stuff like that. <laughs> you're definitely going to come out with some things that are going to help you in your well-being. But as you say, it overtly, powerfully, helpfully gets people thinking about what it would really mean uh, to have Jesus as part of your life, the big story of God restoring his broken creation, and that we can actually play a part in that as well. And, and I, think, I think because it's pitched so well and it's communicated so well, then, then it's intriguing for people. People are just like, oh, this is interesting because like today, most people just don't know about this stuff. Yeah. And the minis are great. Oh, the minis are great. I love the minis. I mean, I wouldn't want to drive in one myself, but they are, they are, they are kind of cool. And so to a church leader listening to this, mm -hmm. what would you say? I, I would say do it, be encouraged. I mean, it, genuinely, we think this resource is fantastic. The quality of the video is great. The content is really, really good. It's so accessible. It's easy, like for all of our, we did a shout out to all of our group leaders and said, look guys, we just need to hold multiple spaces. You show the video, here are some questions. It's easy. And that's what our group leaders have said. This is easy. People are engaging with it. People are loving it. Uh, I believe we will have great stories by the end of it of people's lives being encouraged you know, cheered on and transformed. And, and we're looking for the next step for people as well. And so, uh, but go for it. But I would, I would say, use it as part of your missional strategy, not as a one hit wonder, but as, you know, if you think Alpha's great or other courses, then use this as part of your menu of things to regularly throughout the year, be good news to your community. And, right. and what would you say in terms of the, the strength in how you've done it that's multi-generational. Did, did you always approach it like that or think we'll just do it with adults or no, what's I think, been the strength in that? I think because we wanted to do uh, something that went across the whole of the church in this season, just say we're gonna completely focus on, on God's plan for our well-being this term, then, and because we are a multi-generational church, we wanted that sound to impact every generation. We wanted mums and dads to be having conversations with their kids and, and their young people. And, and so uh, for us, it had to be right across the piece. And I think that's been part of the strength of it because Amazing. everyone's talking about it. And they're talking about it on social media, they're talking about it in their homes, everyone's studying the same theme each week. And uh, every, every time it's talked about, it goes deeper. Wow, it's amazing. Matt, thanks so much. Thank you for having me, it's been great. <laughs> thanks for being with us. Pleasure. <laughs>